Well, I thought it was an excellent opportunity to really show those members of that select committee who are going to make a report shortly about all of the aspects of Brexit that are relevant to the British Parliament, um, to show them the things that mattered to Gibraltar. And I think we managed to get that across. They obviously had the material from the House of Lords uh, Select Committee already, and they had the written evidence we'd filed. They saw the transcript of what I said there. You saw that some of their questions were derived from that. So I think we gave them the opportunity to go into further depth where they wanted, and also to give them some helicopter views of the issues that really matter, like the issues of, of Gibraltar's British sovereignty and how we are wedded to that going forward in an exclusive basis. And I thought Jose Garcia made a short but important intervention about the issues that were relevant in respect of aviation that will continue to be very relevant even after we leave the European Union. Chief Minister, I know the government hasn't wanted to comment until the judgment, but has the Advocate General's opinion in the case of the Gibraltar Betting and Gaming Association had any influence in your message and in how your relationship with the UK will develop going forward? Well, the reason the government hasn't wanted to comment formally is because, of course, this is not the judgment of the court. This is an opinion given to the judges about where the Advocate General thinks the, the, the judgment of the court should go. But if we were to look just at the, the opinion of the Advocate General, I, I would say to you that I think in the context of what we have seen said um, outside of the United Kingdom and outside of Gibraltar about how Gibraltar should not perhaps be seen as part of the United Kingdom's negotiation in respect of its exit of the European Union, I think there's a very valuable judgment indeed about how we are to be treated uh, in respect of that negotiation uh, and how the future relationship with the United Kingdom uh, may be determined because, of course, this judgment says that we and the United Kingdom are to be determined to be seen as one member state for the purposes of interaction with the other member states. And I think, therefore, it is a very, very important piece of the jigsaw puzzle that is Brexit for Gibraltar as we go, go forward, the very complex and, and sophisticated jigsaw puzzle that we are trying to put together here. It's anything other than simple, and this is another important part of that jigsaw. Chief Minister, travelling to the European Parliament on Sunday, what sort of message can we expect you to deliver there? Well, remember that the European Parliament is set up in principle a lot like the British Parliament, and most parliaments are. It has commissions which are like select committees. This is the Constitutional Affairs Commission of the European Parliament. The setup is slightly different. Um, there is a presentation from the party appearing before the committee, so I will get the chance to speak first for about 20 minutes and make a presentation of the issues that are relevant to Gibraltar. Um, then the questioning will come, and that will be about four minutes of questioning and there um, I will be uh, questioned not just by MPs or MEPs rather uh, of all the different political persuasions but also from all the different nations that are represented in the European Parliament so not all nations are represented in each uh, committee but we know that in particular uh, Spain is represented there in respect of the different ideologies by some PSOE uh, members of the European Parliament and some Partido Popular members of the European Parliament who, who as you know um, have been saying some of the things that they will be putting to me in the context of that intervention and I will have an opportunity of putting to them very directly the views of the people of Gibraltar. So if I could pick out one thing that is important about next week, I think next week will be the first time that Spanish politicians will be putting directly to a Gibraltarian politician the concept of joint sovereignty. Now in the past these things have been done uh, by presentations to the United Kingdom, by letter, etc. Never, I think, in the political history of Gibraltar has a Spanish politician put directly to a Gibraltarian politician the concept of uh, Gibraltar sovereignty being diluted in any way. The makeup of the European Parliament enables us to have a discussion with all the ideological groups and all the nationalities represented there in the context of this committee, which will inform the European Parliament as to what the position of the people of Gibraltar will be. That makeup will also allow a Spanish politician to put to a Gibraltarian politician a concept that is entirely anathema to us, um, and they will therefore um, be hearing directly from the people of Gibraltar what it is that we think about our sovereignty going forward. They will have to listen carefully to our presentation 
of why exclusive British sovereignty in the future is all that the people of Gibraltar will countenance um, and uh, that it will be the people of Gibraltar that will determine the future of Gibraltar also exclusively and our right to self-determination. I heard uh, the Prime Minister Theresa May yesterday making a presentation to Republican uh, congressmen and senators in Philadelphia and explaining to them how in part, the British government sees uh, the Brexit moment as a, bre as a moment of national self-determination. Those are words that we don't usually associate with the United Kingdom. We associate them with overseas territories, and in particular with Gibraltar, in the context of the macro-political issues that uh, are relevant to our relationship. Well, this will be the moment where our national self-determination is expressed also in the context of that European Parliamentary Commission.